Okay, so we are recording this presentation um, and it will be posted online. Uh, welcome to the IETF. Um, I'm going to start by one of the uh, keys to the IETF. This is the IETF note well. So uh, when you register for the meeting, you will have uh, acknowledged and accepted this. And also you will see it in all IETF meetings at the very beginning of the meeting. Uh, this uh, reminds you about the basic policies of, of the IETF, uh, code of conduct and those kinds of things. Um, it also has a whole list of RFCs that talk about the process, um, our harassment process, our harassment procedures, our code of conduct, um, and our uh, patents and participation rules. Um, if you have any questions about this, feel free to ask any of the IETF leadership, uh, and they will be happy to um, uh, help inform you more about it. Um, so I'm going to start at the very beginning of the presentation to highlight some of the newcomer uh, activities at IETF 110. Um, I used to say that these are different because uh, you know we're in a virtual meeting, but this is our fourth consecutive virtual meeting. So I think we were. Uh, these are a little bit more the norm recently than otherwise. Um, the first thing that we have are these uh, tutorial overviews, these webinars. Uh, you're at the one, the first one today, and then there'll be another one uh, late on Friday uh, for the uh, Asia Pacific region. Um, this, uh, we also are having um, what we're calling newcomers ask me and others. Um, and the newcomers ask me another is, um, at, oh, sorry, ask me anything. Uh, the, it's like a virtual coffee break. Uh, we've, we've done a couple different, ordinarily when we have a face-to-face -face meeting, we, we have a couple of casual get together events and we've, uh, we're trying different things for how to make those casual get together events um, effective for the uh, newcomers and so, uh, they, we have a virtual space called Gather, which I'll talk about a little bit more later. Um, and we have, um, uh, and we will have like a coffee break in that space. And so you'll be able to come and, and meet up with a few of us and, and ask any questions that you might have, or just talk about how the week is going or anything that you might want to talk about. Um, the third thing that we have this week uh, for IETF newcomers is the IETF guides program. In the IETF newcomers email that you got, uh, there will be signups uh, related to that. Um, and so feel free to sign up for that. And in that case, you're matched one-on-one -on -one with a um, um, experienced ietf -er, hopefully somebody that's working in relatively the same space that you're interested in. And that allows you to get uh, a little bit more one-on-one -on -one conversation about the IETF. Um, so what's the scope of this meeting? This, this, this session, this webinar is really about preparing for an IETF meeting. So it includes things that, you know, how to help you get started, uh, strategies on how to make the most of the meeting. Uh, it does not include like the history of the IETF or how to write an RFC, uh, how to get your work adopted into the IETF or anything like that. It may have some hints about that kind of information, but this is really meant to be a, how, to, how to make the most of a meeting um, presentation. So let me start a little bit with the IETF and its related organizations. Um, so uh, the IETF, the Internet Engineering Task Force, uh, the mission of the IETF is to make the uh, internet better, to make it work better by producing you know, high quality relevant technical documents that influence the way we design and use and manage the internet. Um, so it is the, uh, the primary standards body for all of the IP based uh, standards. Um, it is a standards development organization. For some of you, you may have worked in other standards development organizations like IEEE or ITU, uh, and some of the, some of the consortium-based organizations. Um, you know, there, there are any number of standards development organizations out there, and, and the IETF functions as one of those, as an international one. The ITF has self-selected individuals, so it doesn't have formal membership. So you, you don't join the IETF based on uh, your uh, country or voting or any of those kinds of things or paid memberships. It's uh, anybody as an individual is willing to participate. Um, 
We don't formally vote. Uh, we do gauge consensus, and we will talk a little bit more later about consensus uh, and how we measure that, but that's the, we do hum. We don't vote, but we do hum. There is no formal government role in the IETF. So uh, analogous to something like the ITU, where it's a treaty-based organization, um, or some of the national standards organizations, uh, this has no formal government role. And governments, uh, individuals from, from government participate just like individuals from any other uh, organization. Uh, it is driven by um, market-based uh, adoption. And so we really try to identify uh, the standards, we develop the standards, and then the ones that are the most successful are the ones that are adopted, not necessarily the ones that are mandated. Um, and so there are, you know, there are a number of documents that we may develop that may not ever get real strong traction, and then there are other documents that are that become core foundational standards of the IETF of the internet. Uh, it is focused on internet technologies. So what I said earlier about it being uh, the, you know, the primary standards organization for IP internet protocol uh, based technologies, and then that's what we're doing. And it is bottom up. Uh, so uh, ideally, we have uh, proposals brought to the IETF, the IETF uh, evaluates them, and then the, the, it, it, the solutions bubble up from the bottom. The IETF is divided into seven uh, work areas, uh, and this is just a organizational mechanism to keep all of the work organized. Uh, there is the uh, applications in real time. Uh, so all of your SIP, your voice over IP, those types of technologies are there. Uh, transport, so uh, TCP, UDP, uh, quick new emerging standard there. Um, routing, all of the routing protocol. So um, all, all the BGP work and those kinds of things are done in routing area. MPLS is done in routing. Um, the internet area is where your IPv4, IPv6 standards work is done. Also things like uh, DNS, DHCP, uh, NTP, if you're interested in time synchronization. Those are all internet protocol based um, internet area groups. Operations and management is where the Yang work is done and also uh, operational work. So uh, for example, there's a CIDR ops working group, which is the one that looks at uh, secure interdomain routing operations. Um, so a lot of times when uh, a, a technology has uh, emerged to the point where it's really st stable and there's a lot of work and discussion around how you operate this in the real world, then there'll be a working group in the operations and management area that will talk about uh, the operator aspects and possibly put out guidance uh, related to that. Uh, the security area of the working group that really encompasses all the other areas in a lot of ways. Uh, but uh, that's where your, um, your TLS work is done, uh, you know, IPsec in years past. There's uh, all of the work related to uh, applying crypto to, to standards is generally done in the security working group. And then finally, there's the general area of the IETF. And the general area is um, all of the things that are not covered by those, those other six areas. So it's uh, you know, primarily IETF processes. Uh, rules, um, uh, operational type questions, you know, of, of how we, you know, how we operate and how we uh, collaborate together. Uh, those are general area working groups. Uh, so I mentioned earlier IETF and consensus. So the, um, there is an old IETF mantra. It's basically we reject kings, presidents, and voting. We believe in rough consensus and running code. Uh, this is an old quote. Um, credited to the early foundations of the IETF. But what it basically means is that, um, as I indicated earlier, we don't vote. Uh, so rough consensus is a process by which all of the um, issues have been addressed or discussed, uh, but they may not necessarily have been accommodated. Uh, so you can uh, move forward even if there are uh, dissenting opinions. Um, and it's a um, form of, of measuring uh, how robust the support for something is. I mean, if you, if, if you think in terms of voting, um, uh, when you vote, uh, your vote is either you know, yes or no. And so it's hard to say, well, you know, I have really strong support for this, or I have 
you know, I'm, I'm sort of lukewarm or I'm just voting yes because everybody else in the room is voting yes. And so uh, consensus really tries to gauge uh, what the level of actual support for something is. Um, so you can have dissenting opinions, but they don't necessarily stop all the work. Um, and humming is the way that we use to uh, measure that level of support, you know, the, the passionate passion associated with, with support. So, uh, you know, if you ask a question of the room and everybody kind of hums softly, you kind of get the idea, well, you know, they're, they're sort of supporting it, but they're not really that passionate about it. Uh, you know, if you ask something of the room that everybody feels very strongly about, uh, then people might hum quite loudly and then you'll know that you have a really strong consensus. Uh, one of the primary roles of the of the uh, session chair, whether that's the working group chair or or the you know the moderator of a BOF or whatever, um, is you're responsible for measuring that consensus and for building the consensus. And finally, face-to-face uh, -face meetings or virtual meetings as we have them um, are ways to move work forward more quickly. But the bottom, you know, the bottom line is all consensus is measured. Um, on the working group mailing list. So you, you need to go to the working group mailing list to actually determine consensus. Um, in true IETF style, there's a whole RFC written uh, about um, humming and consensus, and that's RFC 7282. All right, so this is um, a little bit of a colorful chart that talks a little bit about the various parts of the organization. Um, the IESG is the Internet Engineering Steering Group. So previously I mentioned that uh, there were seven areas and so each area is comprised of a number of working groups. And you can see all the little WGs and the little area bubbles. And then each of those areas has area directors uh, that are responsible for that area. And the body of people, those area directors, that body of people is called the IESG. And they are the management body for the IETF. Separately, there is an IRTF, which is an internet research task force. Um, and research groups can form for work that's not really relative, uh, ready for standardization yet. Um, and also for other um, general topics. So for example, there's a, uh, uh, so the CFRG is probably one of the better known research groups. So that's the Crypto Forum Research Group. And that's really made up of uh, a lot of uh, researchers and security professionals. Um, and it's a way for the IETF working groups and standards working groups to get advice in crypto and they develop recommendations on how crypto should be applied to um, IETF protocols. So that's a research group in the IRTF. Um, and so the IRSG is made up of a group of people that manage the um, IRTF and all of the research groups in, inside of the IRTF. Often, and we'll talk about this a little later, IRTF meetings meet the same as uh, the same week. Some of them meet the same week as um, uh, uh, working groups in the IETF. Sometimes they meet at academic conferences to get that level of, of interaction with the researchers. And we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, there is the Internet Architecture Board, the IAB. Uh, and this is, the, uh, is an organization that looks at the policies and the processes and, the, and manages the external relationships um, of the uh, IETF overall. Um, and finally, there's the IETF LLC, which is the administrative um, part of the IETF. So they manage the contracts um, and uh, all of the business processes associated with the IETF. Down in the bottom left, uh, we have two little boxes that are uh, related to this, this ecosystem. Uh, one is the RFC editor, which is the organization that manages the publishing of all of our documents. And finally is IANA, which is the organization that manages the numbers associated with our protocols. Um, and I'm pretty sure I just covered all of this <laughs> in the last slide. So um, I did. So the IESG, the IRTF, the IAB, and the LLC. If we had a face-to-face -face meeting, each one of these would have badges and they would be tagged with different colors. Um, but uh, for now, we will have to skip that part. So let me talk a little bit about what happens at an IETF week in a nutshell. Um, so generally speaking, at an in-person event, you have organized events on the agenda that include uh, working groups. Uh, and there's roughly 130 working groups. I haven't counted them recently. I'm 
I'm not exactly positive. Um, and you have uh, birds of a feather sessions. So you have, uh, which are meetings to talk about getting work started in the IETF generally. You have the research groups and there's usually, you know, there can be a few of these meetings during the week. There's a roughly 15 research groups. Um, you have area-wide sessions uh, the, and the plan areas, the invited talks. So there's a lot of times, like I mentioned, the security area. So there's a, um, usually on the fourth day of the meeting on Thursday, there's a SAG meeting security area advisory group. So that's basically a security wide meeting. Um, I know the uh, often the like the apps area, for example, the applications in real time area, they have a apps and um, uh, they have a apps area working group and apps uh, area meeting generally on the agenda. So these are, are sessions that are broader than a single working group. Uh, they may still be a subset of the IETF, or if it's the plenary, uh, it could be the, the full IETF. Uh, historically, we've had, um, sometimes you have administrative plenaries, which focus primarily on in administrative issues of the IETF. Uh, sometimes you have technical plenaries that are uh, organized by the uh, IAB, uh, and sometimes you have a combination of the two. But generally, uh, any of the plenaries are intended to be uh, topics that impact the entire IETF. Um, and we have invited lunch talks. Um, we haven't had as many of those in the virtual space. Um, in fact, I'm struggling to think of a single example. I don't think we have. Um, but often in a face-to-face -face meeting, uh, the sponsor or somebody like that might be giving a lunch talk. Um, the week before the IETF and the weekend before the IETF, we have a hackathon. Um, and We'll talk a lot more about that later when we get to a slide on that. Uh, there are generally some sorts of social events. Sometimes we have a, a IETF a broad social event, and sometimes there are some smaller targeted social events. Um, we have uh, tutorials, deep dives, and lunch sessions. Um, we don't have quite as many tutorials in the virtual space as sometimes we have in the real space. Uh, we are going to have a deep dive this time on DNS, which is the week before. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, so occasionally on uh, Sunday evening, we have hot RFC lightning talks. And these, this is a really good way to um, possibly even before you get to the boss stage where if, if you want a quick, uh, you know, quick feedback on some ideas that you have and a way to uh, gather, you know, potential collaborators that you don't know about, we might give a five to 10 minute presentation um, on, a specific topic and then basically the point of that is to ask you know is there anybody that's really interested in working with me on this space because the single best way to get uh, technology advanced in the IETF is to identify other people uh, uh, outside especially outside of your organization that are also interested in solving the problem you're working on so you know if, if there was a single piece of advice I could give to people about how to get work incorporated into the IETF it would be you know, to do the groundwork and find uh, collaborators because a pool of collaborators is what's gonna help you get your work through. And finally, there's uh, side meetings and open time. So I'm gonna talk about each of these in more detail um, as we go through, oops, long way. Um, so the other thing are the uh, activities that are not on the agenda. So um, we have, uh, you know, often hallway meetings or bar boffs or marathon editing sessions. Um, we do have an app um, and the app can help you uh, navigate your way through the agenda. Um, and then obviously we have the data tracker and I'll talk a little bit more about the data tracker later, but the, you know, the, the single place that you really need to focus on to get uh, information, you know, your documents and things like that is the data tracker. Um, in the IETF virtual world, uh, we have uh, a tool called Gather, which is basically our equivalent of a um, of your hallway meeting. It's the, it's the platform that we are using to uh, help facilitate hallway types of meetings. Um, there will also be some side meetings. Um, so in a sense, it, and side meetings is, is uh, there's a way to sign up for a side meeting and to advertise and to um, so that other people can find it. And that's another way to find people that are interested in working on something that you're working on. 
or in particular for side meetings, you know, for example, if you, you know, have a small subset of a working group that are trying to, you know, do some detailed editing on a document or to do some brainstorming on a solution where we're, we're struggling to find a, a way forward, uh, that those kinds of side meetings are the ones that would be uh, helpful in this context. And those are self-organized uh, and that the IETF provides a wiki that allows you to announce there. Um, Oh, I went the wrong direction again. Um, so anyway, IETF 110 will be online uh, March 8th through 12th. Uh, there are some things in the two weeks proceeding. So you are now at the two week proceeding point. Um, so newcomers overviews and the meet echo training sessions are all this week. Um, and so you're at the first newcomers overview. Um, the meet echo training sessions, um, I, I highly recommend uh, attending one of those if you have not. Meet Echo is the platform that we uh, use for the meeting. So for example, for this meeting, we're, we're using Zoom, uh, but for a regular IETF meeting, we use Meet Echo and it's uh, a custom built tool that uh, enables us to have a lot of the features that we would have in a, in a normal face-to-face -face IETF meeting. Um, it's, it's a little bit, uh, different, but like all of these tools, I mean, every one of them has a different user interface. And so with, with Meet Echo, if you spend a few minutes getting used to the user interface uh, before the meeting starts, then, then you will be well served during the meeting itself. Uh, we do are doing the hackathon. So for, um, for our IETF meetings in virtual space, historically the hackathon has been the weekend before. Uh, so for, virtual hackathons, it's the week before, um, and there's a kickoff session on the first day, and there's a wrap-up session on the last day, and that's for everybody. Uh, and then in between, the, uh, the groups self-organize and uh, work in, in there, there's a list of topics, a list of technology topics. You pick the topic you're interested in, you associate yourself with that group. And then that group will self-organize over the way that they best want to work through the week. Um, I know that um, the couple of the sessions, a couple of the hackathon sessions that I have previously done virtually, you know, we, we agreed upon like a three or four hour window uh, each day where, uh, we would all be online at the same time working on stuff. So um, different groups are gonna organize in different ways. And so what you're gonna need to do is find the group you're interested in and figure out how they're organizing and how you can interact with them. Um, I mentioned this before, but basically all session information uh, is going to be on the data tracker. Uh, and then the link to the side meetings that I mentioned earlier is right here. So that, that will show you all of the side meetings that are ongoing. Um, there's also additional information on how to participate and uh, a newcomers page to give you specifics on the newcomers activities. Um, so the working groups obviously are the biggest part of the IETF. Um, most work is done on mailing lists in between meetings uh, and some working groups also have uh, virtual interim meetings. So we've been meeting, for, you know, meeting regularly in between the regular full meeting of the IETF. Um, Generally speaking, working groups spend their full working group meeting uh, focused on solving key issues. So oftentimes you're not going to see a lot of presentations um, giving you a lot of background on, the, on it unless it's an early working group. So if it's a working group that's been working for quite a while, you know, for example, the TLS working group, uh, you know, published TLS uh, 3.0 a while back, um, and that working group you're not going to walk in and get a presentation on what TLS is about. What you're going to get, get is a discussion about, you know, some specific options or some specific flags or some, you know, some specific aspect that's currently being worked on. Um, there's a charter including milestones uh, uh, up on data tracker and all sessions are uh, streamed and recorded. Darn it, I keep going the wrong way. So birds of a feather session, I mentioned those earlier. This is the way that we um, get new work into the IETF. Uh, so it precedes the formation of a working group, but it needs to be pretty solid at this point. Uh, you usually talk about what the proposed charter for the working group might be. Uh, it's um, 
this is a better place to get um, the kinds of presentations that give you an overview because it's, it's talking about you know what the requirements are we're trying to solve uh, what the proposed solutions that we might have on the table would be how we might organize a work in this on this topic and most importantly uh, is there consensus is there uh, adequate support to pursue this work in the IETF and based on all of those things um, you may or may not formulate a working group coming out of a BOF. There can also be BOFs on topics that are one-time you know, discussion topics for the IETF. So, you know, like we, we want to discuss uh, how to move forward in a particular area. It might be a process area. It might be, uh, you know, a one-time uh, discussion of a technology that we don't plan to standardize, but we would like to discuss. Uh, generally, they meet only once, sometimes they meet twice. And they always have a responsible area director. So the key to getting a birds of a feather session approved is to uh, connect with your area director. Um, the other thing about uh, birds of a feather session is there's a process for proposing them and they get evaluated by the IESG and they determine whether or not uh, a proposal will go forward. The uh, Key to that, obviously, again, is, is building, uh, building that group of key collaborators. Uh, by the way, I didn't say this at the very beginning, but feel free to type questions into the chat. I am keeping an eye on that. If you have any questions, I'm just sort of storming right on through here, but I'm happy to, to accept questions. Um, so the IRTF groups we already talked about. Uh, officially, the IRTF is an activity of the IAB. Um, it is focused more on research than engineering. Um, IRTF meetings at, I, at the IETF are open, just like any uh, IETF meeting is. Um, and it, the IRTF is really looking at, you know, bringing those new ideas, bringing that new research into the IETF and maturing it to the point where it's ready for standardization. Um, in this particular uh, photograph, uh, these gentlemen have, have won a recent version of the uh, ANRP, the Advanced Networking Research Prize, uh, which uh, funds researchers to um, present their work at the IETF and gives them a, a small monetary uh, award as well. It's another way to highlight research and bring it to the IETF. So here we have some area-wide sessions. Uh, we have um, uh, some plenaries, uh, the, the picture in the center is, was, is a lunchtime talk that was done one time. Uh, and the rest of these are uh, plenary type meetings. Um, and then we have hackathons and code sprints. Um, obviously in, uh, in our virtual existence, our hackathons don't look quite like this, but uh, in a physical meeting, this is what they would have looked like. Um, perhaps here you could take a picture of your uh, desk at home with your, your cables on your desk and that would, we could add that to the, to the set. A um, little bit more information on the hackathon. It is free and for anybody. It's open to participate. Um, another part, another motivation of the IETF, in addition to bringing new technology to the IETF, it's also looked at as a way to bring new participants to the IETF. Um, so the other thing is you really want I talked early on about how the IETF original mantra was the rough consensus and running code. So another motivation of the IETF is to help move our standards through more quickly. Uh, sometimes it's used by working groups uh, to break, you know, like roadblocks in your working group. Uh, I know a working group I was on, we were having a lot of trouble moving forward. Um, we we uh, decided to do a hackathon. And once you got everybody in the room and writing code, then it was a lot easier to get people to uh, make decisions and, and come to consensus. Um, and obviously it's not the weekend at the start of each meeting, it's the week before for virtual. Um, so we do have some networking and social events. Um, on the left is a um, social event that we had at a really fantastic aquarium a few years ago. And, and hopefully in the future, we'll be able to do that, uh, do things like that again soon. Uh, on the right is um, a photograph of the this IETF sisters. This is a, an informal uh, group of women who uh, get together for networking and, and uh, generally lunch at an, IET, at 
at a physical ITF um, has a mailing list and then the reference to the mailing list will be further on. Um, but it's a way for, uh, for women to connect with each other and support each other in the work of the IETF. Um, but yes, there is still yet more. Um, I talked about the side meetings uh, early on. Uh, so this is, I've been saying an ongoing agenda experiment for a while now. I, it might've moved beyond agenda experiment to the way we're doing things, but um, there is a wiki and on that wiki, there's a template um, and you can sign up for a side meeting. So those meetings are not on the main agenda. They're going to be on this in the separate wiki, uh, but it's a self, it's a way of self-organizing meetings on topics relevant to the IETF. Um, so these meetings might be anything from a, you know, a quick editing session to a, you know, here's my latest, greatest idea, and I'd like to talk to a few people about it, uh, you know, to any other topic that would be relevant. They tend to get organized at the last minute. Um, and if you have, uh, and also if you are doing a side meeting, so for example, if you're interested in organizing a side meeting on um, a specific topic, um, then you might send an announcement, you know, you might sign up on the wiki for a side meeting, and then you might announce it a couple places where it would be relevant. I mean, if you were doing something that say was related to security, maybe you would announce it in the SAG working group, or you would announce it, you know, if you were doing something that was related to DNS, maybe you would, you would announce that you were gonna have this side meeting, just a quick email to the mailing list. Hey, I'm gonna have this side meeting on this you know, latest cool idea I have about you know, DNS. And you might uh, post that to the DNS related working groups. Um, and since DNS is on the mind, um, the next thing we've started, I don't know, maybe a little over a year ago now are these technology deep dives. Um, so these were a little bit more than, than tutorials. They, they were uh, a more in depth than like a 30 or 45 minute tutorial. There was a DNS deep dive that was done, um, but the part one was already done and it's recorded and it's up on YouTube. Um, I didn't actually mention that specifically, but there are um, uh, any net, there are a, um, everything that we, that all of our meetings uh, are recorded and they're available on our, on the IETF YouTube channel. Um, all the previous meetings, just uh, all of those kinds of things. That also can give you an idea. If you look at recent meetings, you'll see some idea of how they work. Um, so anyway, this, this particular IETF, we're gonna have the DNS deep dive um, part two. And um, sorry. And so that, oops, sorry. Um, um, so anyway, I would highly recommend that because if, if you're, this is gonna be some of the experts in the DNS space talking at length about um, DNS types of topics. Uh, so general meeting etiquette, uh, the, you need to read the documents of interest before the working group sessions. Obviously you can't read them all, but, um, but you do need to have an idea of what, what's going on in the working group session. Uh, it's very important to behave respectably, respectfully and tolerantly towards all participants. Uh, you need to talk to and listen to people. Um, enjoy yourself and uh, remember to sleep. Now this was uh, uh, perhaps less of an issue when, when we are all meeting from our own homes, but when we're all meeting in a foreign city, sometimes we burn the candle at both ends. It doesn't end well. Um, so for the online version, basically you need to practice uh, good online uh, meeting practices. Please test your configuration in advance. Uh, keep yourself muted. As I mentioned, there, there are meet echo training sessions where you can get an idea of how everything works. Um, Keep yourself muted and your video off except when speaking. Uh, use a headset if possible. Uh, speak slowly and clearly and be concise. Um, basically, we, we've all had a year of practice now on doing lots of online meetings. So all of the things that you've learned over the last year obviously apply in this context. Um, technical comments and questions are welcome. Um, 
but also you need to remember to keep them within the scope of the conversation. So using uh, my TLS example, uh, you know, if they're discussing a specific flag or a specific uh, mechanism that's being added or modified, uh, questions about that would be appropriate. Uh, coming to the microphone and asking a question about, uh, you know, how TLS works, uh, that would probably not be as, as welcome. Um, there is a working group Jabber channel to discuss meeting relevant topics. Um, and that is actually built into Meet Echo. So if you're using Meet Echo, uh, the Jabber tool is, is incorporated into it. Uh, that's uh, XMPP based. Uh, there are ongoing IETF experiments to use different tools as well. Um, so keep an eye out for announcements for, you know, there's this channel over here that you might want to try. All right, um, bringing new work to the IETF. So I, I mentioned this a little bit earlier. Um, step one, the, probably in my mind, the most important step is you need to find some collaborators that have a similar interest. Um, and there's you know, ways to do that. Uh, do a side meeting, um, do a hot RSC, uh, you know, post to a mailing list that might be related that to say, you know, anybody who's interested in working on this over here, come join me. Um, next thing would be some initial drafts um, that, uh, and maybe even have some barb offs. Now, the initial draft is, uh, is really just a way to get your, your ideas down on paper so that other people can think about them and digest them. A barb off is nothing more than an informal gathering. And uh, as I'm saying this, I'm thinking maybe for online version of this tutorial, we should change those words to something that might mean more in the virtual world. But uh, basically write, write some drafts, have some informal meetings. Uh, and then once you get a little bit of uh, consolidation around your issue or your topic, uh, talk to the area directors that might be interested. Some of the areas have uh, working groups that are called dispatch working groups. Uh, and a dispatch working group is really about bringing in all of the various ideas and then figuring out, it, it's like a triage for working groups. If, if you're familiar with the concept of medical triage, this is um, standards triage. You, you bring in topics that people wanna talk about and you have a short conversation, not necessarily to resolve the, you know, the issue itself, but it's basically, you know, here's something that somebody wants to do. Is this something, you know, we think is worth doing or not at the highest level? Yes or no. Uh, do we have an existing working group that this would fit into? Maybe we should ask them to go to that working group. Uh, do we want to pursue uh, starting a new working group, which means, you know, do we want to set up a BOF and do all of those kinds of things? Those are the kinds of topics that a dispatch working group would address. Um, then propose a BOF, and a, and a good BOF needs a draft, a charter, and an agenda. The uh, IAB uh, shepherds BOFs, and if you know you want to have a successful BOF, I strongly encourage you to uh, ask for the assistance of the IAB um, in, in finding somebody to help you shepherd that BOF. Then obviously you, you hold the BOF um, and, and figure out what the next steps are. There is a whole tutorial on this subject. Um, and the slides and the video are, are available there. Um, all right, so now I'm coming to the third part of the meeting, which is basically uh, the people, the information and the tools, basically all the resources. Uh, I haven't seen any questions in the chat. Uh, as I said, feel free uh, to uh, post questions. I'm happy to take them. Um, so, but anyway, moving on to this. So. The very first, obviously, is IETF participants. So all of you and all of us uh, are the people of the IETF. Uh, these are passionate, smart, vocal people. Um, they, generally speaking, are, are here to make the internet better, uh, and they're very passionate about it. Uh, when we meet in person, it's an uh, informal dress code. If you're used to more formal standards organizations with suit and tie, this tends to be more of the t-shirt and jeans type of a meeting. Um, and um, the ITF is 
uh, technical experience is very highly valued. Um, so people that write code, uh, people that have built systems, uh, this is the kind of feedback that we really are interested in getting. And these, this, these are the kinds of things, you know, real operational experience and real developmental experience is what helps make our standards stronger and better. Uh, so do your homework, but please speak up and contribute. Uh, and also close working relationships. A lot of people in the IETF have been working together for a long time. And, and so over time, you develop friends and you will see you know, people that you know, move from company to company, but they still stay engaged in the IETF. Uh, so then the next level is area directors and working group chairs. Um, so if you hearken all the way back to about 30 minutes ago when I was talking about the um, area, the organization of the IETF and all of the areas, uh, you have working group chairs, which are responsible for each individual working group. And then you have area directors and they manage the uh, working groups under their uh, portfolio. Uh, the, uh, and then you have the IETF general chair, which is currently Alyssa Cooper. And she is the uh, area director of the general area. Uh, and then she's also the general chair of the whole IETF. Um, we have a, an, this presentation doesn't get into this, but we have a whole nomcom process that goes into how um, uh, our leadership is selected. Uh, and so every uh, March meeting, we have a turnover of some percentage of that leadership. So at this meeting, you will see some of the area directors um, are being, uh, are stepping down and new ones are being put in their place. Um, and after four years of service, um, Alyssa will be stepping down at this IETF and uh, Lars Egger is uh, going to become the new general chair of the IETF. Um, oh, let me mention this as well. Uh, if you have any questions or any concerns about working group operations or behaviors, please feel free to discuss these with either the working group chairs or the responsible area director for that working group. Um, next, we have the IETF executive director. Uh, I mentioned earlier the uh, IETF LLC and um, Jay would be the, uh, the first employee of the LLC. Um, and he is the one responsible for the uh, operations of the IETF. Um, the IETF Secretariat, uh, this is a, uh, a, a group of folks who, who basically do all the heavy lifting for the meetings and everything in between. Um, and ordinarily at a regular IETF meeting, you could find them at the registration desk or at um, uh, and in color, in the, the same color shirts, which you usually that tells you that they're somebody on staff that can help you. Uh, this is a company called uh, AMS. Uh, they do an excellent job. They keep us all organized. And uh, at a regular meeting, they keep us fed. And at a virtual meeting, uh, they keep us where we need to be. Um, you can find them in Gather. There will be a virtual help desk at Gather, and you'll be able to walk up and ask them any questions that you would like. Um, the RFC editor, uh, table on the left, and the IANA staff. Uh, at a physical IETF meeting, there will be, there would be um, a, a table set up so that you could go and ask the RFC editor any questions about you know, getting a document through the final RFC process. You know, a lot of times, if, if you have a, a document that's currently being edited by the RSC editor, you can stop by and help them address any final issues or discuss it with them. Um, and then the same with the IANA staff. If, if you are in the process of developing a document and you are working with IANA to set up a registry or something like that, uh, the, the, face, the, uh, the IETF meeting is an opportunity to quickly meet with them and discuss it. So uh, for the virtual version of an IETF, the RFC editor staff and the IANA staff will post office hours uh, and they will be available in the gather platform. So I, I mentioned this a couple of times, this is the virtual space that, that we're using. So you can walk up to the RFC editor desk and you can either, you know, you can say hello, um, you can discuss your issue with them one-on-one -on -one in a very ad hoc fashion, just like you might be able to do in a, in a physical meeting. The only thing you can't do, and if you see like that, 
across the front of the table. They usually have candy there. Um, so you, you can't get, I guess you could pick up a piece of virtual candy. It's not quite as satisfying. Um, I talked a little bit about at the very beginning about our anti-harassment policy and our code of conduct. And then I just mentioned, if you have any concerns, you should speak to area directors. The, um, that we, IETF does have an ombuds team. Um, we are very serious about uh, an anti-harassment policy um, and any harassment that you feel uh, it, you need to report, there is an ombuds team to report it to. And these are the current members of the ombuds team. Um, newcomer, how am I doing on time? Okay, excellent. So newcomer resources, uh, the TAO of the IETF is, is uh, the, a high level novices guide to the IETF. It's a good place to start. Uh, every meeting has a newcomers page for that meeting, which will have the links to the various activities that are related to the newcomers. Uh, and then the tutorials is uh, just a list of, of recent tutorials that we've had on various topics. Um, more meeting resources. Uh, there is a first timer, first time attendees mailing list um, that you can get on and uh, ask any questions. I mentioned early on under the social activities, the sisters. Uh, if you go to this blog post, it has a link to uh, where you can sign up to be on the sisters mailing list. Um, there are a number of mailing lists um, referenced here. Um, I just realized that I uh, cut and pasted the wrong link when I wanted to do this. There is a meeting issues link. Um, and I put the regular links. So as you will see, the, the last two uh, links are the same. Uh, there's actually a separate meeting issues link. And I will update this on the slides and you'll be able to get the, um, the, the correct link in the slides that will be posted online. Um, data tracker and tools. Uh, the data tracker is the single most uh, is the hub of all of the information. So all the information about the working groups, about the documents inside the working groups, uh, minutes for meetings, all of those things can be found uh, within Data Tracker. Um, and then Tools is a uh, has some other additional tools. Uh, it's basically, in some ways, you could think of it as the the experimental. Um, tools and then a lot of the things that get developed that were developed originally in tools eventually get moved to data tracker. Um, I talked about Meet Echo. This is the tool that we use for the meeting. Uh, all the sessions are going to be on the agenda page. Um, there is a link to uh, the participant guide. Uh, they do quite a bit of documentation on how to, um, to, to use Meet Echo. Uh, the gentlemen on the right are the, the Meet Echo uh, development team. Uh, normally in a physical ITF meeting, they would be there in person. Um, and there are um, a number of practice sessions. Like if you've never used Meet Echo, I highly recommend that you at least log on in advance. Um, talked quite a bit about Gather Town through all, all of this. Uh, it does have the, um, it is our basically our virtual hallway track, our, our sort of social platform. If you look at the picture on the left, uh, you can see a uh, registration desk and you'll often find uh, secretariat staff there and they'll be posted hours for when people will be there. Um, and if you look at the very top of the left-hand picture, you can see uh, a knock desk, an IANA desk, and you can't really see it behind the picture, but I'm pretty sure that's the RFC editor desk there. Uh, each of those desks uh, will, will have staff at them during posted hours. Uh, so if you have any, um, the, the knock desk is a little bit less relevant in a virtual space, but if you're having any uh, technology issues, you can go to the knock desk. Uh, IANA, again, for assigned names and numbers and the RFC editor desk. Um, and then on the right, you see a, a virtual bar. So uh, you can, uh, schedule your virtual barb off in the virtual bar. Um, Jabber is the group chat that we use. Um, if you're using the full Meet Echo platform, uh, you, uh, it's integrated into the platform. 
Uh, otherwise, uh, there's a bunch of information about potential clients um, available. Above all, um, enjoy the meeting. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, I know this was a lot of information that I whipped right through, um, but I think uh, I think I've covered everything. So I I still have no questions. So does anybody have a question they would like to ask? Okay, well, in the absence of questions, um, we would uh, definitely like feedback. Um, so we do have a survey, there's a QR code and a link for that. Um, and if you have any questions, feel free to contact the edu team. If you have any questions about this presentation or any suggestions on how to execute on newcomers activities and feel free to contact the edu team. Anything else? Okay, so with that, I'm going to uh, stop sharing and um, end the meeting. You're welcome.